Today, we're going to look at an implementation of an EM algorithm for feeding a location mixture of two Gaussian components. So the only thing that is going to be different between those two components, it's going to be the mean of the distributions. The variances are going to be the same for, for both components. And we're going to run that test in the context of simulated data where we can contrast uh, what the model is giving us against the true uh, distribution that generated the, gata, the data. Later on, in other illustrations that we will do in the course, we will use uh, real data. Uh, so I'm going to go over the code and try to highlight some of the main features. Uh, we're going to run all of our simulations in this course, uh, setting the seed of the random number generators. That is just meant to produce reproducible results. Uh, and so that uh, when you go home uh, and you try to do this on your own, you can uh, obtain exactly the same results that we're getting uh, here in this uh, illustration. So the first thing uh, that the code does is it generates data from a mixture of two components. And as I said, this is simulated data. So the true uh, mixture weights are 0 0.6. And uh, because I only have two components, the other one would be 0 0.4. So this is the weight of the first component. Uh, the means of the normals are going to be 0 for component 1 and 5 for component 2. And the common standard deviation uh, sigma, it's going to be 1. So these are the true settings uh, that are used to generate the data. We're going to simulate 120 observations, and we do it using the uh, same type of algorithm that we had uh, discussed in the past, where we first sample what are the component indicators uh, from a distribution that is discrete. In this case, takes only two values, and the probabilities are omega true and 1 minus omega true. And once we have sampled the component indicators, we sample from a normal distribution with the appropriate me, uh, true mean, uh, depending on uh, the component that that observation uh, belongs to. When we run uh, the, that little algorithm, we can plot the data along with the true density, that mixture of two components that we just discussed. And let's do that so that we can get a sense of what uh, the data set that we're going to be working with looks like. So you can see here, uh, this is a, a mixture of two Gaussians that are very well separated. You can see kind of that the width of the two mountains is similar, and that's because the sigma is the same for, for both components. And you can see the observations that get generated uh, for each one of the two components in red for this component and in black for this other component. So, so this down here is the real data that we're going to be working with, and this is the true density that generated the data. So let's proceed now to look at the EM algorithm. The first thing that you need to do before running your EM algorithm is to initialize the parameters in the model. Uh, we have, again, three parameters, uh, w, mu, and sigma. The way they are initialized in this case is very simple. We're just picking omega to be 1 half, 1 half. We're picking sigma to be the standard deviation of the data. This is often a reasonable place to start uh, when you're working with mixtures of normals. It tends to overestimate the variance of the components, uh, but, but it usually serves well as a starting point. And uh, mu uh, is the means. And what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to generate random initial points so that potentially this could change every time you, you run the algorithm. And we are going to generate two randomly distributed numbers uh, with mean equal to the mean of the data. So roughly the mean is somewhere around down here. So we want the means of the components to be centered around here. And then we're going to use the standard deviation of the data, so a range that roughly covers uh, between maybe minus between minus three and six or seven, as in some sense the range of the of where the means of the distributions is, are are located. So so these are just initial points, and and the algorithm will refine these initial points iteratively. So we can actually plot that just to get a sense of 
how good or bad our initial estimate is. Uh, with those parameters, that's what the initial estimate of the density of the data is. You can see that it kind of covers the right support, it covers uh, the observations, but it certainly doesn't look anything like, like the true density. That's what the algorithm, the EM algorithm will do. It will improve over that. So now that we have initialized it, uh, we need to uh, create a couple of variables that will be used uh, in the execution of the algorithm. S is just a counter of the iteration we're on, and it's going to be increased by one unit every time we run the algorithm. Uh, this SW uh, switch variable is just used to decide when the algorithm needs to end. So you will see that it appears here in the while loop. I'll, I'll discuss this a little bit more in a second. And then we have uh, these variables Q uh, and Q out that just contain um, the value of the Q function at every iteration. And this is used both to understand convergence and to monitor convergence. Uh, and finally, epsilon, that is uh, our stopping criteria. We're going to stop uh, the EM algorithm when the relative error in the Q function is less than 10 to the minus 5. That's what uh, this parameter means. OK, and now we can go into the EM algorithm. Uh, if you remember, the EM algorithm has two steps. The first one is the E step. And in the case of mixtures, that E step corresponds to the calculation of the weights of the Bs that uh, tell you what is the probability uh, that each observation comes from each one of the two components uh, given the current value of the parameters. That's what this section of the algorithm does. And then we have the M step, that is this one down here, that uh, uses, um, that maximizes the expected value of the Q function where the expected value involves uh, the use of these uh, terms that were computed in the E step. Um, so these formulas just reflect exactly the same formulas that we derived in the lecture, so I'm not going to discuss them in a lot of detail. The only thing that I do want to observe here is that we do the computation in the log scale, so we compute the log of the unnormalized Bs, and before uh, renormalizing, we uh, do this subtraction before taking the exponential and normalizing. We do this subtraction of the maximum. We have a separate uh, little lecture on this, but this is done uh, for uh, numerical uh, stability. If you do the calculations in the regular scale, these calculations uh, can become numerically unstable very quickly. So I suggest that you look at the other lecture uh, to understand a little bit more why this is the case. Okay, in the final step, so once we have covered the E step and the M step, the last piece of the algorithm is uh, just a check of convergence. And we check convergence by computing the value of the Q function at the iteration. That's what QQN is, QQ new. Uh, so this contains the current value of the, uh, of the Q function. And what we do is we compare that new value of the Q function against the old value, uh, QQ, and we see uh, what how big the relative error is. And if the relative error is less than epsilon, then uh, we change this switch variable to true, which will stop the algorithm. And otherwise, we don't do anything. Uh, otherwise, we just store values in, in this variable. So we increase the counter in one unit, and we um, store the, the value of Q, QQ new now becomes, in some sense, the old value of Q uh, because we're going to enter a new iteration of the algorithm. Uh, and finally, uh, we just add the current value of Q to this uh, variable that stores uh, the values of the Q function over iterations. The last bit is something that you don't need to do in most applications, but I'm doing it here for illustration, is I'm going to generate plots uh, for each iteration of the EM algorithm where I show what is the evolution of the Q function. That's what this piece uh, up here does. And it also it's going to uh, plot the density, the current density estimate. So it's essentially going to reproduce this graph up here, but rather than doing it with the first observation or the first iteration, like it's done here, it's going to do it uh, a different plot for each for each iteration. Okay, so let's uh, run uh, the algorithm and let's discuss the 
the output a little bit. So um, Okay, so the best way to look at this is by looking at it like a movie. And let me move back to the beginning of the movie uh, so that things are understandable. So so this was our initial guess of how the density looked like. Uh, not a very good representation of the true density. Uh, once we have done uh, one iteration of to the EM algorithm, uh, this is uh, what we observe. So we're still pretty f uh, far off. Uh, the dashed line in this case is the estimate and the uh, solid line is the truth. So as we add one iteration to the EM algorithm, we get an improvement in the Q function and we see that still we have this one kind of unimodal estimate. We do another step and we start to see that kind of it becomes a little bit wider and also the Q function improves. At the next iteration, we start to see how the algorithm starts to pick the fact that there is something multimodal. There is a little bit of a dip here. So one more, and it starts to pick it much better. Better, better, better. Now it's still doing some refinements, but you can see that the Q function is not changing very much. And you can see also that this curve is not going to be changing too much uh, from one iteration to the next. So I do another step and pretty much looks the same. I do another step and pretty much looks the same. I do another step and basically the algorithm has converged. So, so you can see that in this case, the algorithm converges really fast. It's only 11 iterations uh, to convergence. And uh, the Q function is an increasing function. That's the other thing to observe uh, here. And of course, that the density estimate is actually pretty close to the truth, uh, even though we only have 120 observations to do the full density estimation. So this is how the EM algorithm would work or the implementation of the EM algorithm would work for the example that we discussed uh, in class that we derived in detail in class.